nugget is on delayed separation of the umbilical cord or when that little bit of stump of the belly button takes too long to fall off. The average amount of time it takes for the umbilical cord to separate is somewhere between five to 10 days. If it takes more than two weeks, then that's delayed. If it takes more than three weeks, then that's considered really delayed and something concerning might be going on. Easily the most common reason for why there is delayed separation is that the umbilical stump never had an opportunity to dry out. So it's very important that that area stays dry and that's why we recommend to parents that they only sponge bathe their infants until the umbilical stump falls off. We used to recommend using alcohol or some sort of other kind of drying agent, but now it's thought that maybe those are affecting the bacteria that are actually responsible for helping to make that little umbilical stump fall off. So the best thing that you can do is just try to keep that area really dry. The second reason why the umbilical cord might not be separating is that there might be an infection brewing in the area of the umbilical cord. An umbilical cord infection is called an umphalitis. And even though it just kind of, kind of looked like a superficial skin infection with a bit of redness or heat or a bit of tenderness, maybe even a little bit of pus draining from there, like any infection in an infant, it can be very serious because it can get into the blood very easily and really be quite dangerous for the baby. So if you see any of those signs or symptoms around the baby's umbilicus and you're at home you should seek immediate medical attention. Obviously if the baby's in the nursery or in the NICU then immediately we would evaluate the baby, send cultures and start antibiotics. So number two is an infection of the umbilical cord. The third reason is even rarer. During embryological development, so obviously in utero, the umbilicus is connected to the terminal ileum through the omphalomesenteric duct, also called the vitelline duct, don't, you don't have to remember the name, and the umbilicus was also connected to the bladder through the uracus. Sometimes, if those structures stay patent and they don't resorb the way that they should, then sometimes there remains a connection between the end of the intestine or with the bladder to the umbilical cord. Obviously, if that's the case, not only will that little stump not go away, but you're gonna see other symptoms. So if there's a connection with the vitelline duct, you might actually see stool draining from the umbilicus. And if there's a connection with the uracus, then you might see urine draining. The fourth reason is exceedingly rare. In fact, you're pretty much only gonna see this on your boards or in exams, as well as in case studies. So the first one is leukocyte adhesion deficiency, shortened to LAD, which is a type of leukocyte abnormality that can be associated with a lot of immunodeficiencies. And the second one is factor 13 deficiency, which can also be associated with other types of bleeding. Again, extremely rare, but probably the answer on your boards. I hope you learned something today. Please remember to subscribe and comment below about what you'd like to hear next. Thank you.